This revolution is an unusual revolution. It's unlike probably anything ever before. And one of the reasons is it's a woman's uprising. Uh, the slogan for this revolution is Zan Zendigi Azadi, which means life, women, liberty. Like that's the slogan for the revolution. They're, the songs that they're singing are about this, the chants, the marches. A whole cadre of the revolutionary force are basically middle school and high school and college student women. In Iran, the women are actually running the revolution. So when I talked about petrochemical and gas and petroleum, those guys are all men. It's a 90% male dominated economic field who are siding with the women in the revolution. Like they're clear about this. It's not only about women's rights, there's economic problems, there's this need for democracy that Iranians have never let go of, but women's rights are at the core of it because it's become the symbol of oppression for everybody, even the men. And, and that's what's really interesting about this. Because if you look at some of the protests, the, the hijab is gone. Like the, all these women have torn off their hijab. But there are also this cadre of totally covered women. That not just hijab, but even uh, chador, which is more, it covers, they, they tie it off under your chin, who are standing with the women who don't have hijab, who are saying, we want women to have the right to choose. We want to choose to wear hijab, but we want them to choose not to if they don't want to, so we're standing with them. There, there's an amazing video. A woman has just been captured by the morality police. What a disgusting group of people. You're the morality police? Anyway, get a job. Like, I don't know, construction or something. Build something. Worthless. Anyway, this woman gets captured for not wearing hijab. All of a sudden, these covered women, they're wearing hijab and chador, come charging at the cops. They're beating the cops. The, the woman, the uncovered woman escapes. By the way, she looked like a gazelle. She's like leaping through the air running. And, and in the meantime, the covered women, after the woman has escaped, they just sort of walk away. <laughs> and the morality police are like, what just happened? <laughs> And it, it, so, in other words, this isn't about in Iran, this isn't about they want to topple the regime and then do something weird like ban Islam. What they want to do is they want to topple the regime, create a democracy, and then have the freedom for people to choose the kind of life they want to have going forward. They want to terminate the theocracy and replace it with a secular republic. They don't want to terminate their culture. They don't want to de-Muslimize. And I think sometimes people are seeing it in that framework, which is wrong and bizarre. But in the meantime, you've got places in Europe saying, should we ban hijab to show solidarity with Iran? And they were getting this really loud group of women from Iran going, no, that's not, that's not any better. You're just flipping the oppression. You're still telling women what to do. We have an idea. Let women decide what they want to do which would be neat to do in Texas. Wouldn't that be neat if women had rights in Texas too? I, I think we should do that here. I think you should be inspired by the women of your own. There was a woman's uprising in 1975 in Iceland. Those are the only two now that I know of, the one that's taking place in Iran and the one in Iceland. The one in Iceland not only succeeded, they drafted a new constitution. They, uh, the women successfully toppled the state. The, Iceland is probably the most democratic country on the planet right now. So it, it worked, it transformed. From what I can tell, Iran totally has that potential in this moment. It, it's not certain it will happen, but that, that's actually what this moment is. The, the Iranian people are sophisticated, they're intelligent, they have the potential to have a massive economy. They're the 21st largest economy on earth right now with their economy being flushed down the toilet. So if they, could, if they could get out of that and rebound, they'd probably be like the 12th or 14th largest economy. This is, this is a superpower state with enormous resources. They're one of two countries on the planet that has an advanced drone research program. The United States is the other one. That's why you keep hearing in the news that there are Iranian drones in the Ukraine because the Iranian drones are so much more sophisticated than the Russian drones, right? That, that's, that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with an incredible state with incredible potential that's been crushed 
by this conservative regime that wants to superimpose its idea of morality, and it's not working. It's killing the Iranian people, and they're, they're done.